Sunday mornings are special. And guess what makes them special? You. Having to be with you and spend time with you on Sunday morning, it's just a delight I can't really phantom with enough words. So, I'm glad I'm in your space today. I know I can't see you, but I know you can see me. So, hi, good morning. How are you today? How was your week? We have an amazing edition today on our Sunday service for you. So I'd like you to just stay with us till through this and let's have a good time together, shall we? I'm sure we can. But before we do that, I'd like to pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for an amazing service and an amazing section. Today we ask that everything we do, we do done in decency and in order. And your name alone will be glorified. But more importantly, we would learn something new that will help us in our work with you today. And as we fellowship together, be glorified in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'll be right here at the end of this. See you. I don't want to sing the latest song. I don't want to percolate the crowd. I just want to make you smile. I don't care who thinks I'm right or wrong I don't care who tries to calm me down I just want to praise you now You covered me In the midst of it all You love me Gave me another chance You saw my needs When others saw my faults You forgave me I don't have to listen for my name they don't have to walk me down the aisle I just want to make you proud Should I make the Hall of Fame Or they save a special seat I just hope that you'll be pleased You covered me In the midst of it all you love me, gave me another chance You rescued me, I was going to fall, going to fall You saved me, so in my life the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor, I just want to say, you get the glory, you get the praise, take all of the honor, I just want to say, I want you to get the praise You take the honor I just want to say You get the glory Father, you get the praise You take the honor I just want to say
Hello friends, we are still on our nugget, some secrets of sources. This is the part two of it. Part one was done last Sunday. Okay, what are the secrets? One, success is in you because God is in you and with you. Next, the moment you do not press forward, you move backward. Rise above the temptation of coasting. Next, the desire to excel is really the desire for a fuller, richer, more abundant life which comes from God. Next, when God entered your life, He deposited a relentless desire for betterment. Next, as your life gets better, you get better. And since there is no limit to how much better you can become, there is no limit to how much better you can make your life. Next, to see the rewards of life come your way, don't just talk about your goals. Your goals must turn into actions. Turn your words into actions. Next, a casual attitude towards life leads to a place of disappointment and defeat. Next, God's call upon our lives is a lifelong mission of excellence. Therefore, pursue excellence. It is a daily striving for improvement. Many quit because they can pay the price. Next, why should I pursue excellence? Because the existence of God, who is excellent, lives within me and demands that I improve daily. Now, it's important that you know this and don't forget it. Your life is a gift from God to you. And the quality of your life is your gift to yourself. God bless you. Hello, Royals. It's time for the word. Today, we have an interesting topic and it is forgiven to forgive yes we've been forgiven to forgive have you ever thought of how much it actually cost god to forgive you your sins what you may have gone through the cost and what had to be born if god asked you to pay for every sin you commit do you think you can pay no, none of us can. Just as the king in this parable saw that the servant could not pay the huge debt that he owed, you know what he did? He canceled the entire debt. In that same way, God saw that we really could never pay for our sins. And so he decided to forgive us all our sins. Isn't that amazing? Let's read this from the Bible and it's from our text for today, Matthew chapter 18 from 23 to 30. Matthew chapter 18 verse 23 to verse 30. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. This parable teaches one of the principles of the kingdom, and that is forgiveness. Because of the blood of Jesus, God has forgiven everyone. Once you receive the Lord Jesus, you receive forgiveness for the sins you've committed in the past, 
some that you may make some mistakes and fall into in the present and even if anything is going to happen in the future that's how God forgave everything totally and guess when he did it yep over 2,000 years ago way before you were born such is his love for you in this parable the king cancelled all the debt the servant owed him and yet the same servant could not cancel the debt that his fellow servant owed him and guess what he did he put his fellow servant in prison isn't that terrible but guess what we are all like the unforgiving servant unfortunately God has forgiven us our huge debt of sin which you could never ever pay but again and again, we find it hard to forgive one another. Once someone offends us, we want to get back at them or fight or show them that they can't do that to us or even want to beat up someone. And when we're not getting physical, guess what some of us do? We keep malice, not talking to her. No, stay on your path. I stay on my path. That's not nice. Most times we don't want to walk with the person, we don't want to play with them, we tell other people not to play with them. There's some children who are actually living in unforgiveness against even their parents. Yeah, sometimes we do things and our parents might just do some things to straighten us out, but some children decide, I'm going to dislike my parents for them, I'm not going to say hello to them, I won't respect them. No, that is wrong and it is sad. No matter who offends you, you should remember that you too, at one point in time or the other, actually offend other people. With this parable, the Lord is teaching us one thing, that he has forgiven us so we should be able to forgive others who offend us. The parable also teaches us that when we sin against God, we need to ask for forgiveness and we do this through prayer. The servant owing the king asked for forgiveness. He told the king that he couldn't pay and asked him to forgive him. But God has already forgiven us all our sins, right? So why should we pray or ask for forgiveness? We should ask for forgiveness so that we can get a number of things done. One of them is so that we can continue to be humble and ask God to help us to stop sinning. Another thing that praying for forgiveness helps us with is so that our hearts will not become hardened. Sometimes if people keep doing the same thing, you keep sinning or you keep doing whatever you want without asking for forgiveness, you begin to think that it's okay and you might get your heart hardened. So praying for forgiveness all the time prevents our hearts from getting hardened. The third thing we gain from Praying for forgiveness whenever we sin is that we can avoid being accused by the devil and being made to feel guilty. Once we pray to God for forgiveness, we're free and we cannot be held in condemnation or made to feel guilty all the time. Another lesson from this parable is that when we offend others as well, we should ask for forgiveness. The servant that owed his fellow servant, he actually asked for forgiveness. Even though it was refused, at least he did his part by asking. Ask for forgiveness any time you offend someone. You shouldn't feel too big to do that. If they don't forgive you, well, you've done your part. But at least you weren't feeling like you had the right to do something to them or you didn't have to ask them. You know that some people can never ask for forgiveness. They feel that I'm sorry means that they are weak or they're belittling themselves. No, that's not right. They're being proud and they are not wise. As a child of the kingdom, you should know that one of the principles of the kingdom is that if you, whether you're a boy or a girl, you offend someone, you should be able to say you are sorry. Even if the person is younger than you, even if you are a boy and the person that offended you is a girl, it's fine to say you're sorry. All right? Remember 
that God resists the proud. Also, when someone offends you and asks you for forgiveness, you should forgive them from your heart. This shows that you are just like God, your father. As a matter of fact, one of the things the parable teaches us is that if we don't forgive others, we actually end up offending God just the same way that the servant that was forgiven offended the king when he heard that he hadn't forgiven his fellow servant. If you remember the parable, the king got very upset with him and he was punished. As children of God, we have the love of God. Let's use it. When people offend us, let us forgive them because we are children of the kingdom of God and he's given us the power and the grace to forgive people. Another thing you should note, and it's a tricky part that people don't normally take note of is that unforgiveness is a trap mm -hmm. you have to avoid it if you see the person who offended you and you are still bitter it means you still haven't forgiven them that means you have stored unforgiveness in your heart on the other hand if you meet the person and you have peace in your heart then you have truly forgiven them and you are free in Matthew chapter 18 verse 7, the Lord Jesus taught us that offenses will surely come. When offenses come, no matter the hurt, forgive. It may be very hard and painful to let go just like that. But it's worse for you if you do not forgive. So let's obey God and let go of everyone that has offended us and even those that will offend us in future. A regular interpretation that people get from that parable is that if you don't forgive others, God will not forgive you. Mm, but there's something a bit deeper. God is actually merciful and kind and faithful. He has actually forgiven us. The issue is that if we do not forgive, can you imagine if God takes that same posture? That means we're going to have to pay for all our sins and we know that we cannot do that. What unforgiveness does is that it puts you in a frame of mind where you are condemned, you feel guilty, and so you cannot now receive the forgiveness that God already has for you. So that parable teaches us that we have to avoid unforgiveness for all the reasons there are so that we can receive the forgiveness that God has already given to us. Let's go over a few truths from this parable. Number one, we have been forgiven to forgive. When God forgives us, we should be able to share that with other people and forgive them. Number two is that Prayer, that is asking for forgiveness, is the only answer for sins and transgressions. And so if you sin at any point in time against God, we should pray for forgiveness. If we sin against someone or we offend someone, we should ask them to forgive us. Number three, truth. It may be very hard and painful to let go just like that. We're not saying it's easy, but it's better for us because definitely it's worse if we do not forgive. So let's obey God and forgive so that our hearts are right with him and we can receive his forgiveness. And number four, truth. The fact that God has forgiven us our sins, past, present, and future, does not mean we should just go about sinning, no. Rather, it should make us love him more, cherish him, and ask him to help us obey him and live for him. Our memory verse can be found in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and it says, Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. NLT. And our home play for this week takes us back to the top. How much did it actually cost God to forgive you your sins? We can find this from the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18 to 19. 
And then the second one helps you to ponder on this question and to try to answer it from some scriptures. And the question is, so why did God forgive you? We can find some reasons why God forgave us our sins from the following verses. You have Psalm 130 verses 3 to 4. You have Daniel chapter 9 verse 9. You have John 3 16, John chapter 17 verse 19 and Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Till we come again into your homes next week, God bless you and remember to be kind to one another and forgive each other. Remain blessed. Was that not amazing? Was that not something new you could learn and use for your week today? I hope you found something new for the teaching and on the session. This week, as you know, we have quiet times for you on our Telegram platform. So you should follow us on our Telegram platform. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can always see our materials as they come out weekly. Don't forget, we have our gap fest coming up where we answer your questions. But for us to answer your questions, you need to send them to us. The numbers are shown right here on your screen. Please call those numbers, WhatsApp them or text them. We would like to hear from you. Royalty, that's who you are. Royalty, that's who you should be. Royalty. That's what you should manifest this week. I'll be here again next week to see you and to join you. I can't wait to also hug you physically. But till then, Jesus loves you. You are royalty. I love you. Go and conquer your world. Bye-bye.